Hey guys, Churchy here. So I've noticed quite a few new players posting in the Outward Reddit lately, and I decided I wanted to share a really powerful build that uses high movement speed and ranged weapons to outpace and kite enemies. I've had a lot of fun with this build, and it's a build that can dominate the hardest content in the game, and I think it makes a great build for a first run through of the game. So in this video, I want to show you why I think movement speed is king in Outward. I'll quickly cover a few reasons movement speed is so good and then dive into the build. So a few reasons a high movement speed is so good in Outward are Reason 1. You can cover a lot of distance quickly. You can travel and explore the world at a reasonable pace and if you ever have to get back to town, it takes a few minutes at most. Reason 2. You can pick and choose your fights and if you find yourself losing a fight, you can easily disengage. Reason 3. You can use your speed to outmaneuver enemies in close quarters combat, easily circling to their back for a strike or baiting out and avoiding an attack. Reason 4. You can actually get away with carrying more weight past your bag's max capacity and still be able to move at a reasonable pace. Reason 5, and this leads me into the next part of this video, is that you can combine movement speed with a bow and pistols to easily kite and kill the majority of enemies in the game. So onto the build and the steps to follow on how to acquire the skills and gear you need. Stay with it, it's a bit of a ride. The build needs quite a bit of silver, totaling around 6k for the skills and majority of the gear, excluding the Chimera pistols. I've left a link in the description to another guide I've made on how to farm unlimited silver without leaving the first town. You can also find a link to the image version of the build I'm showing you in this video. Let's get started. Step one, chuck your favorite tunes on and farm up about three to four K silver in Ciezo and craft 150 health potions. Make bandages and buy up iron scraps or find another way to quickly earn 6,000 silver. The video linked in the description will show you the farm route that I use. While farming, buy any ingredients required for items needed for the build, such as scaled leather, make a scaled satchel ASAP. Also pick up any other items you fancy. You can farm as much silver as you want after all. The Soroborian Caravaneer sometimes has some useful late game crafting components and the alchemist sometimes sells occult remains. Sell everything you don't want because it's going to get you to 6k silver faster. Store everything you're not using in your lighthouse stash. Quickly stop by Ito the Spellblade and grab the fitness skill. For the rest of the steps, sell or store any random items you find and don't want. Um, also make sure you always have enough travel rations to get between regions and earning a bit of silver along the way covers travel costs and it might leave you with a bit of extra silver at the end. Step two, kill pearl birds to find a pearl bird mask. This might take two minutes or two hours. The drop chance is 2.4%. Buy a weapon you feel comfortable killing pearl birds with. I went for an iron halberd and then quickly killed some hyenas to make a fang halberd. Great axes also work well. Both have a decent attack combo pattern. Bring a bedroll or tent with you just outside of Cierzo, set up camp and wait for an hour. You're trying to get ambushed. If you are ambushed, either bandits or a pearl bird will spawn. You can also roam around Chersonies a bit. There are a fair few pearl birds near Cierzo. If all goes well, you'll soon have a pearl bird mask. Step three, sell health potions at Vendavil Fortress. Hopefully by this point, You'll have a scaled satchel backpack. Grab the 150 health potions you made and any bandages and iron scraps you want to sell. And using that nice movement speed bonus from the Pearl Bird Mask, head over to Vendavil Fortress. You can find it on the southwestern coastline of Chersonese. Go inside, talk to the bloke sitting at the table. Select option number two. What could I do for you? You'll find yourself a slave in their mine, but that's just fine. Head to the guards near the locked gate and ask if there's anything else you can help with. They'll say the cook and nurse need help and we'll unlock the gate. Head down the hallway on the left and in the room on the left, reclaim your clothing and backpack. Head back down the corridor and find the nurse in the room to the right of where the guards were. Sell the health potions. You should now be 2,250 silver richer. Also, sell any bandages and iron scraps you've brought along. The iron scraps you can sell to a nearby slave in the other room. Now, find the hole with what looks like a diving board at the top of it. Jump into the abyss. 
You'll wake up on the beach without your backpack, but don't panic. Hike back up the beach towards the fortress. You'll find your backpack near some shells and amylite near the fort entrance. Head back to Siezo for a well-deserved rest. Step 4. Off to Berg for a war bow and bow skills. Store whatever you're not using, grab all your silver, and get a few travel rations together. You're going to need 14 total for the journey you're about to go on, but don't worry if you don't want to carry that many, you can stock up on more in the cities. Head over to Enmerka Forest and make your way to Berg. Stop by Tour the Wild Hunter and get the following skills. Hunter's Eye, Sniper Shot, Hunter's Resilience, and Piercing Shot. Also, buy a Warbow off the Blacksmith. It costs 1,000 silver. Side note here, Combining iron scraps with wood will get you three arrows. It's a very useful recipe and good to know for this build. You can also combine iron scraps and thick oil to make bullets. Again, another handy recipe for this build. Now, head back out into Enmerkar Forest to find the Soroborian Caravaneer and to maybe pay a visit to the Immaculate. Step five, wandering the woods to find the master trader gear. Now you're trying to find the master trader garb and boots. These will buff your movement speed even more and make your stamina drain more slowly. You can find the garb in chests, hollowed logs and other loot containers in the Enmerkar forest. The Caravaneer sometimes sells parts of the Master Trader set, but only when out in the large world space areas. The Immaculate in this region will also give you the garb if you ask him for equipment. So roam around opening logs and chests while making your way to the Immaculate's camp. You can find the camp south of the southern old wooden mill marker. Keep an eye out for the Caravaneer. If you're lucky, he'll have the Master Trader boots. Buy the boots off him if he has them. You can also find the boots in the chests, hollowed logs and containers in the hallowed marsh region. But if all has gone well and you're lucky like I was, you'll have the garb and boots before you leave the Enmerkar forest. Once you are wearing all this gear, you'll be getting a 35% movement speed bonus. So now get ready to go to the desert. Step six, off to Levant in the Abrasa Desert to get some movement speed. Make your way out of the forest and into the Abrasa Desert. You'll need four travel rations to do this. Head east to Levant. Find Jame on the mercenary trainer and buy the following skills. Fast maintenance, swift foot and marathoner. Now your movement speed bonus will be at 45%. It usually sits at about 40% because wearing your backpack takes off about 5%. Consider picking up a couple of pistols from the blacksmith at this point if you have the silver to spare. Cannon pistols are always a good choice. Um, a side note here as well is that you can get even more movement speed. Uh, you can eat jewel meat, which you get from the jewel birds in the Abrasive Desert. And you can also buy jewel meat from Chef Tenno in Levant. With the speed up bonus from the jewel meat combined with your gear, you'll be at, and the uh, swift foot perk you just got, you'll be at 55% movement speed bonus or 60% if you aren't wearing a backpack. And that is where it just gets absolutely ridiculous and you just fly. Step seven, back to Chersonese to get some shaman powers and mana. Make your way back to Chersonese farm some more silver, or if you have 1,250 silver, head to the shaman in the Hermit's House, aka the Cabal of Wind Tower, in the northeast of the region. You'll have to go through the Ghost Pass Fort, but it should be easy to bypass the enemies. Once you've made it to the Hermit with 1,250 silver, pick up the following skills. Call to Elements, Weather Tolerance, Shamanic Resonance, and Sigil of Wind. Sigil of Wind is ridiculously powerful when combined with pistols, but to use it in a region, you need to activate the Wind Altar in that region. So make sure you find and activate the Altars in each region. You'll also need mana, so head to one of the Conflux Mountain Paths. I went to the Holy Mission Path at the base of the mountain on the western, southwestern side. If you go to this path, once inside, unlock the gate blocking your way by activating three levers. You can find the levers in side chambers. Um, it's pretty easy to find the entrances to these side chambers on the left and right side of the cave. You can either fight the enemies or you can just avoid them using your movement speed. Once the gate is unlocked, continue on to the conflux chambers. Make your way to the ley line and trade some health and stamina for mana. 
I traded 10 health and stamina for 40 mana. I find this is a good amount for this build um, because Sigil of Wind is the only spell you really cast and 40 mana allows for some wriggle room when considering sleeping taking away from your total mana pool. Step 8, to the swamp for some buffs. Now that you've got mana sorted and assuming you've got 150 silver, head to the Hallowed Marsh and make your way to Monsoon. You'll need three travel rations to get there from Chersonese. Find Galera, the warrior monk, and buy the following skills. Slow metabolism and focus. Now find Moffat and accept his training for 50 silver to receive the blessed skill. Also, while you're here, find Lane the alchemist and buy some occult remains if you haven't got some already. Congrats. Now you've got all the skills and some decent gear and should be feeling pretty powerful. Now it's time to sort out a horror bow and unlock the ability to buy a Chimera pistol. Step nine, it's shell horror hunting season. Do whatever farming you need to do. Also, if you are joining one of the factions other than the Levant based one, do that now. Side note here, once you join a faction, if you don't do the Vendavil quest within 20 days, Siezo will be permanently destroyed. Talk to Burak in Siezo to start the quest. Back on topic, get seven rations together and travel to the Abrasa Desert. In the Abrasa Desert, there are a couple of shell horrors that are easy to find and kill, and they'll get you the horror chitin you need to complete the horror bow. One is in a canyon near the hives, and one is in a cabal of the wind tower. Aim down sights with your bow and kite the one in the canyon with your movement speed. To kill the Shell Horror in the Cabal of Wind Tower, activate the Wind Altar nearby if you haven't already, cast Blessed and then enter the building, drop a Sigil of Wind, fire off a couple of pistol shots, exit the building, reload your pistols, enter again and finish him off. Shell Horror is a weak against lightning, so you'll make short work of it. Now combine your War Bow with two Horror Chitin and one Occult Remains. Congrats, you've got a badass Horror Bow. Now is also a good time to pop into Levant and join the Heroic Kingdom of Levant if that's the faction that you want to go with. Step 10. Unlock Tamara in Levant and unlock Chimera Pistols. Start doing your faction questline until the council meeting in Berg. After that section, you can enter any inn, but for convenience, enter the inn in Berg and you should overhear a conversation and get the Blood Under the Sun quest. Now head to the Burn Outpost in the southern part of the Enmerkar Forest past the Burning Tree. If you're following the Heroic Kingdom of Levant faction quest like I was, you'll be able to knock over two quests in one go. Kill the bandits inside the Burnt Outpost for the faction quest and look for a note on the table in the first room for the Blood Under the Sun quest. Now head to the Hive Prison in the Abrasa Desert. It's left of the hives and the clue is on the left as you enter. Head to Levant and find the next clue in a basket on a rooftop in the slums. Talk to Cyrene and you'll load into the Undercity Passage. Head down and find the prince, talk to him, and once his dialogue is finished, you'll be teleported back to Levant. Talk to the queen for your reward. If you're a member of the Heroic Kingdom, you'll get a free house. Now that Blood Under the Sun is done, head back into the slums and find Pigeon Eye. Don't worry, this quest is easy. Just donate 40 silver to him five times for a total of 200 silver. That will finish the quest and unlock Tamara. And since you've completed the Blood Under the Sun quest, she'll stock Chimera Pistols. Make sure you leave Levant and re-enter, this will despawn the barricade that stops you from reaching Tamara. When you can, acquire as many Chimera Pistols as you want. Before I finish up this video, I will quickly show you how I have my hotbar set up. Feel free to set up yours however you want though. I put Sniper Shot on Q, Piercing Shot on E, Fire Slash Reload on R, Sigil of Wind on 1, Horror Bow on 2, and Pistols on 3, 4, and 5. Get used to hitting K and using Focused and Blessed before starting a fight. Right click to use them in the skill menu. Also get into the habit of making sure you've got 15 arrows equipped before a fight and that you've got some bullets in your pocket and backpack. And most importantly, always make sure you load your pistols before starting a fight. If you're an idiot like me and forget and then start reloading your pistols right in front of an enemy who wants your blood, you'll quickly find yourself getting your ass handed to you. Last but not least, you can find some useful potion and food recipes on the image post I've made for this build, but there are plenty of other handy recipes and all sorts of awesome info on the wiki, so I'd encourage you to look around on it. I'll leave a link in the description. And that's all there is to it. Now you're kitted out and ready to get out into the world of Outward and explore. 
Hopefully you've learned a thing or two along the way that will help you in your future endeavours in Outward. Thanks for watching. Have a good day or night, whichever it may be, and I'll see you in the next video.